Sorry we can't be here together in Durham for homecoming, but as part of Stay Homecoming, please enjoy this 2019 classic versus the Maine Black Bears, an overtime thriller from right here in the Whittemore Center. It's a Northern New England college hockey rivalry that dates back more than 40 years. This season marks the 20th anniversary of the Whiteout the Wit at the University of New Hampshire's Whittemore Center. Tonight in Durham, a near capacity crowd awaits the 135th all time meeting between the UNH Wildcats and the University of Maine Black Bears. And it comes your way on Nesson next. the Whittemore Center Arena on the campus of the University of New Hampshire for night one of a two-night whiteout the wit between the UNH Wildcats and the University of Maine Black Bears. I'm Mike Murphy alongside Patrick Coley, three-time Wildcat captain. You know all about this rivalry. You know all about whiteout the wit weekend. This is a big-time college hockey game. It's a big-time college hockey environment. This is where the top players show up, and this is where they have to show up if they want to be victorious tonight. 11 days ago, these teams met at the University of Maine, a 4-4 tie. Chase Pearson's the leading goal scorer for Maine, and earlier, he talked to our own Brendan Glasheen. Of the intensity of this rivalry, this is now your third year with the Black Bears. What's it mean to you? What's it going to take here at the Whittemore Center? Yeah, it's huge. I mean, this is our biggest rival, UNA. It's going to have a packed bar, and it's going to be full of energy, but uh, for us, it's just keeping our game simple and working hard on it. Get a feel for the big sheet out here in warm-ups? Yeah, a little bit. We practiced on it last night, so it did help a bit, but uh, I don't know. I'll take a couple of shifts to get into it. Chase Pearson, thanks a lot. Thank you. You know, Chase Pearson from the University of Maine, he's their captain. He has to show up tonight. He's not only their captain, but he's their top power play guy. On the Wildcat side, the hottest player in the country is Liam Blackburn. Points in 15 straight games. He caught up with our own Natalie Norrie. Bears, how do you expect these games to play out? I mean, they're going to be hard fought. It's going to be uh, very emotional games with the crowd and everything that's in it. Uh, coach focused on, you know, not letting the noise come into it and, and just being mentally uh, in dialed into it all, all weekend. Liam Blackburn is, is the Darren Haydar. He's the Jason Krog. He's the Mike Souser of this team, and he has to show up just like those players did back in the 20, you know, 20 years ago when this was a big-time rivalry. Lots of memories, UNH and Maine, and more coming your way when we drop the puck right after this. Sometimes you're ready. Joe, ready? Ready. Sometimes you're not. Ready? Sometimes you can't wait for that moment. And sometimes it sneaks up on you. Ready. But whenever you're ready, or ready as you'll ever be, we're ready as we always are. From the big moments to the small ones and everything in between, we'll handle the financials. Service Credit Union, ready to serve. Welcome back to the Whittemore Center Arena on the campus of UNH. It's Maine and New Hampshire on Nesson all weekend. Big points on the line, and these two teams, they're fighting it out right now. Top eight get into the Hockey East playoffs when the season comes to an end. And right now, Maine is an eighth, just two points behind the Wildcats. Yeah, one game separates these two teams. What a better weekend to set up point-wise and, and have two games in hand right now, tonight and tomorrow night, to settle sort of a midterm type of playoff position on who's going to uh, be in that top eight. And certainly both teams bring emotion to this game no matter what the standings look like when it's UNH main. Let's check the goaltending matchup. First of all, sophomore Mike Robinson coming off his third career shutout against UConn last week. He's part of the big reason why the Wildcats are 7-1-3. and 
in their last 11. Yeah, Mike Robinson's been outstanding. I think he's probably one of those uh, unsung heroes. I think he's not showing up on the, the, the stat sheet every night, but he has been a wall for them. He's come up with clutch saves, and he's been great. And Jeremy Swayman coming off a career-high 53 saves last Saturday in an upset win over number two UMass. The head coaching matchup for the Wildcats, it's Mike Souza in his first season replacing legendary Dickie Milley, whose coaching career ended at the University of Maine in the Hockey East playoffs last year at the expense of the Black Bears and Red Gentry, the head coach. Glad you're with us here for this battle between Hockey East rivals. That game in Alphon, as we have an icing off the bat, that game at Alphon, Patrick, was amazing because Maine rode the momentum of their crowd, scored two goals early, yet UNH was able to mount a comeback, tie the game at two, fell behind three to two, tied at three, grabbed the lead for it. They looked like the Wildcats would steal the win. But the Black Bears able to get the late goal from Jacob Sirota and came away with the one point, four four. I thought they showed great resolve in that game. It showed what type of team they were to come back up in that atmosphere and, and come back to tie it up. So certainly a credit to Coach Souza and his team to uh, be in that environment and come back. Early chance there as Pearson set up Fossier. Pearson number 12 and Mitch Fossier number 11. Junior classmates. Wildcat captain Marcus Vela checked into the near glass by Rob Michael. Veteran defenseman for the Black Bears. Grasso from behind and that gives to Brandon Van Riemsdyk. And the Black Bears will take it away. Alexis Binner just too far ahead of him. Grasso waits for Van Riemsdyk to get back on side. Now it's a three on one. He shoots, aiming for the short side. It goes wide. It's a great turnover there. We just got to convert. A few and aces looking to score on the line rush. I think utilizing their odd man rushes as much as possible. And that's using this ice to their advantage. Use their team speed, stay within the dots, but use that transitional game that they've always been good at in getting pucks down on the uh, line rush. That was Brendan Robbins. Here he comes again. Robbins snapped off one from the right circle. Now he veers in from the left side before losing the puck behind the Wildcat net to Verrier. And the Black Bears will be forced back to their own corner on the far side. It's Brady Keeper, sophomore from Cross Lake, Manitoba. Here come the Black Bears with an odd man situation. Westerlin tried to pass across, but Richie Boyd slides and gets the block. Boyd will now tap it to the near boards, and the Wildcats come out. Aaron Nazarian can't get it by Peeper. A check from Brady Keeper that takes Nazarian off the play. The Black Bears will come out. Long stretch pass. Missed the intended target. Goes all the way down. This will be an icing against Maine. Gives us an opportunity to check out the keys to victory for both teams. Yeah, if you look at Maine coming into the big sheet, they have to convert on the power play. They've been having success on that. They also have to play within the dots. That's that's the advantage of being on the big sheets. They get off to a strong start with this crowd. Now UNH has to use the big sheet to their advantage, use the line rush, use the speed transition, and they have to win this special teams battle tonight. And the last thing is just like anyone watching this game tonight, the emotion in this game has to be controlled if you're UNH. You have to use it to your advantage, stay out of the penalty box, and fuel their legs if they want success tonight. Chris Miller took the pass from Liam back. Blackburn goes behind the net to Angus Crookshank. Near wall. It's Westerlin. Lost it in the battle with Crookshank on the forecheck. Blackburn still battles along the end boards right in front of that wideout student section. Students got here early. They were lining up beforehand. Wildcat players brought some pizzas to the students waiting in line to thank them for coming out here and support. Tomorrow night's game has already been announced as a sellout. And that's what happens when these teams are starting to play well. And the rivalry that is UNH Maine. Long breakout pass sets up Perez, a rocket that goes wide. And all the way back to the Black Bears end. We're more than two and a half minutes into a scoreless first. That was Daniel Perez, a senior from Bloomfield, New Jersey. Will McKinnon having a difficult time tracking that puck, and it does get under Robinson's glove just in front of Kevin Hawk, the sophomore from Braintree, Mass. You know, if you talk about that wide shot that Maine just took, that's that's what we're talking about when you have to get used to this ice surface. You know, you take a wide shot, it goes in that corner, it's going to wrap all the way back down to the other end of the ice. Now you're chasing the whole game. That's a, that's a, a fatigue-type game. This guy's got to get the shot on net. You've got to get inside the dots. You've got to play tight. Wide shots that go wide in this arena are, are a tough, tough play when you're, uh, when you, you may not used to this high surface yet. Grasso at center ice finds Vela. The captain enters, waits for some reinforcements. They'll backhand it along the wall to Grasso. 
Grasso checked off the play by Becker. Wildcats keep it in the main zone. Becker against Grasso, left corner. Becker will get there first after Vela got turned around. Off the near glass, Fossier at center. Benton Mass for UNH. To Will McKinnon, now Grasso gets flattened by Pearson, but a shot after the fact by Van Riemsdyk who came across. Vela pinches in along with Robbins on the near boards. Maine will wind it around to the far end. You said it earlier, Patrick, the emotions here. You, you want to be amped up, but you can't get too amped up if you're the home team. Yeah, you have to control it. You have to use it in the right fashion. You have to use it to fuel your legs. You have to use it to have energy on the bench. You can't use it to have undisciplined penalties where the emotion takes over and you end up in the penalty box. That's when Maine can take advantage of their power play. And that's usually when when the recipe for disaster happens when you have a big time hockey game in a big time environment. And from the main perspective, you just have to keep UNH off the board early on because this crowd is ready and they are ready to make some noise he, here. Absolutely, and that's why I talked about what, if Maine needs one pinnacle to their beginning of the first, it's get off to a good start. Take the crowd out if they can. But certainly I think UNH has done a great job of pinning them in on their forecheck. They've sustained a forecheck and they've been able to get some offensive zone play out of it. It's Nazarian breaking in backhand bid and Swayman swipes it away and then skates well away from danger. Veteran play by a sophomore, Jeremy Swayman, as Coach Gendron told us earlier this week, he has made leaps and bounds of a climb here in year two. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's just, you know, he, he, great save, but that was an unbelievable forecheck to pin them in the zone. They've done a few shifts here now. UNH is able to convert get a turnover, and then get the puck right to the net. Uh, I think it's a great job by UNH to come in, get hard on the forecheck, make it difficult for Maine to figure out this ice surface. Puck comes back to the point. That's McKinnon for Angus Crookshank. The two freshmen combining here. Crookshank behind the goal line is wrapped up by Simon Butala. Crookshank recaptures the puck, the forward check that you've been illustrating, Patrick, here early on. Can the Wildcats capitalize on this extended possession time in the attack zone? In this case, no, as Boyd lost it off his stick, and Perez goes rank wide with the clear. Center zone, it's Chris Miller. Back to the fifth-year senior Boyd. Entry to Blackburn, there's a soft tester, and that's probably the easiest save Swayman will make all night, but it does lead to an offensive zone face-off for New Hampshire. Yeah, and face-offs are always a key to every single college hockey game. You have to be good at the dot. You know, great job by Blackburn to just put it in on net, get a line change. They were at the end of their shift. Now we've got possession. This is the jump ball. This is the basketball jump ball of hockey. This is an underestimated uh, play, in my opinion, on, on how important face-offs are to the game of hockey, especially when you're in your defensive zone. You can't lose them cleanly. And Maine does not. Pearson got the better of that battle against Vela. Black Bears send it all the way down. And Fossier got there first, but then Wildcat lost his stick. Leads to a puck right in the blue paint. An opportunity there for Fossier as it was Edwards Traumax tipping it across the crease. Fossier has it again, half wall. Pearson spins away from the Grasso check. A blast that's blocked as Van Riemsdyk got in the way of Fossier, and Van Riemsdyk quickly plays it to center ice. You know, coaches will always preach 60 minutes. You have to play all 60 minutes, and you can take one minute off, and it can make the difference in momentum in the game. And you, that's why, we, you know, we have pressure up ice by UNH. One shift can make a huge difference in this whole game. So far, six minutes in. No cracks in the foundation. We're still scoreless. Max Gildon. Lead pass. Joe Sacco gets a piece of it. Sacco scored his first career goal last week in the 6-0 win over UConn. That's Jacob Schmidt Vestrup out to center ice across the line. Doherty will tap it over to the left wing. Muehlbauer, now Schmidt Vestrup winds up, fires, bouncing puck that settled down by Eric McAdams. As he lost his edge, he's still able to deliver the pass to Sacco. He's outnumbered as he came across. Muehlbauer lifts that one to the Wildcat line. Schmidt Vestrup, a blast, and it's wide off the glass. Nice job of settling the puck down. You know, you've seen a lot of rink-wide passes by Maine. You've seen some ices already. You've seen some long stretch passes. When you're on the big sheet, you, I personally think you need to avoid that. You need to have more support, short five-foot passes, continually get under the puck and come up together as a group. I think that's part of the 
uh, first period type of adjustments Maine are making when they have to figure out how to play on this surface. Boyd got a piece of that shot from the left side from Kenyon Peeper, and that leads to an odd man rush. Pearson to Nazarian, he scores! <laughs> You don't see a straight two-on-one in the game of hockey very much, but this is executed unbelievably. We're able to get Nazarian to get a shot off, not dusting the puck off. Great job freezing goalie from Maine. And just an awesome job as far as getting that puck off, not, not taking his time, utilizing the opportunity he had to get the one-timer off down at the net, catching the defenseman from Maine up ice. The straight two-on-one is not is practiced a lot in the game of hockey, but you don't see it much in the game of hockey. There's usually some sort of back checker. There's something getting interfered with. But when it happens, you take advantage of it. And Nazarian definitely used his uh, one-time capabilities. Wildcats have Angus Crookshank trying a forehand bid. That was blocked. And the Black Bears will come the other way. Trailmax in transition. He's got Fossier to his left. Trailmax to the slot. His shot, Robinson save, rebound. Fossier out in front. Trailmax tries to throw it in. Too many bodies there. And then it's lifted out of the zone, finally, by Blackburn. I'll tell you what, Mike Robinson made an unbelievable play. Here comes Crookshank. Save, Swayman. Aaron Nazarian scoring his 10th goal of the season on the assist from Jackson Pearson. Some fine net minding since then, but it's 1-0. Great opportunity here by Maine, but even a better job by Mike Robinson. He just shows his athleticism. He gets in the scramble in the paint, but he gets himself back in position to get his body down in that blue paint to avoid that shot from going in. Just a great job. When all happens, you see athleticism come out in goalies down by the crease here. A great job by Mike Robinson. And then right before our break, Jeremy Swayman with a huge stop on Angus Crookshank to keep this just a 1-0 UNH lead. Nazarian, his 10th Pearson, credited with his 8th assist at 7.20. Thus far, no secondary assist. Schmidt Vestrup into the Wildcat zone. Kicks up some snow as he's halting right at the end boards with Gildon and Wise, the two Wildcat blue liners battling for the puck. Schmidt Vestrup gets back out to it to the point. Rister Van Riemsdyk gets a piece and it sails out of play. That was launched by Sam Becker. And there's a good look at Max Gildon, the talented sophomore defenseman, one of many Wildcat draft choices with such potential to go on to the pro ranks. Yeah, Max Gildon, he uh, came from the U.S. under-18 National Development Program out in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and just uh, one of their top defensemen. He's a big body, Plano, Texas kid. He's in his sophomore year, and I think he's done a great job back there anchoring the defenseman, a good blend of offensive defensemen and, and some, someone you can rely on in your own end. Drafted by the Florida Panthers. Eric McAdams keeps it in for Frankie Sheffalo. Here's Eric Esposito with a bid. He goes stick side, and... Swayman able to seal that one between arm and body. UNH has done a great job here of transitioning off of turnovers by UMaine here. And if you're Maine, you're looking at why are we turning the pucks over? And in looking at the game so far, it's because they're too spread out. You know, one pass, two pass, and then the, there's nobody there to turn the puck over to other than a UNH defender. And that's why UNH is doing a great job on their forecheck. They're able to then transition and get some shots on the net. Offensive zone, face-off win. Boyd plays it in deep. Pearson trying to wiggle around a check from Shea, who's also draft property of the Florida Panthers, so he and Gildon perhaps will one day be NHL teammates, but that seems a long time from now because they're bitter rivals with the Wildcats in Maine going head-to-head. -head. Nazarian gets tripped up thanks to the stick check of Michael. Michael plays off the far boards, and now Peeper will keep it along to Westerland. Westerland moves it to the near boards, finds Binner on the wing. Binner can't get around the Kelleher check. And a pass in front of the Wildcat net from Boyd to Verrier springs Nazarian to center. Nazarian enters and flips far side. Wildcats will change up, see if the Black Bears try to catch them in the midst of a change. There's another one of those long passes. It's behind Trailmax. 
Benton Mass goes behind his own net, but good job on the part of Pearson for Maine to get a stick in there. Wildcats will come out. Chris Miller. Leaves it in deep. Fossier in front of Blackburn for Maine, and now Trail Max with his head up. Tries to center. Settled down by Pearson. Pearson across. Tries to play in front, but it's sent aside by Robinson. Brady Keeper looking to keep in. Crookshank. Pearson going one on three. Keeps the battle alive. He's got Fossier trailing, but they're unable to get a shot off. And as a result, McKinnon gives to Blackburn. Blackburn into the main zone. Looking for someone to feed to. Still stick handles and simply plays it to the near corner. That's where Schmidt Vestrup will get there and go behind the net to Keeper. And everyone else peels out of the zone, except for Patrick Grasso, the lone four checker. There's another long pass. Gildon got a stick in there, then lost the stick as the puck goes over the glass. And we've got 9.04 left in this first period. It's UNH with a 1 0 lead over Maine, courtesy of Aaron Nazarian's 10th goal of the season. University of Maine here, they're looking at the set breakout. It seems like they're looking to stretch the ice on, on UNH. And they haven't been very successful at it so far in figuring out this ice surface. But if you're UNH looking at this, you have to play in the guts of the ice. You cannot get caught on the outside of the rink because that's what happens. Long stretch pass, chip into the middle of the ice, odd man rush, and now we have a two-on-one, three-on-two back on your own goalie. So if UNH is going to look at this, they have to stay within the middle of the ice, force everything to the outside. You get pucks in deep, chip it into the stands. That is not a threat if your UNH looking to defend this breakout by Maine. This faceoff will be just outside the UNH zone. Brendan Van Riemsdyk back to Gildon. Van Riemsdyk will press Maine back deep in its own zone. Muehlbauer looked over his shoulder. Now it's Becker on the near side. Doherty out to center ice. Schmidt Vestrup goes opposite corner on the dump in. Anthony Wise. Avoids the brunt of the check from Schmidt Vestrup. Gildon finds Grasso. Ahead Van Riemsdyk. Grasso on the entry. He shoots. Swain in a save, and there will be no rebound. Great job here to, uh, again, convert. But this is where your outside shot, yeah, it's on the net, but you want to get guys harder to that net. You want to put pucks down in his pads to create rebounds that allow guys going to the net to get second and third opportunities. It's 1-0 UNH. Let's get an insight on what's going on on the main bench. Let's go down to Brendan Galashin. Gendron talking to his defenseman a moment ago. We have to keep pushing the puck, but also need to take care of it because it's been rather easy for the Wildcats to get out in transition. All right, thanks, Brendan. Faceoff will be in the main zone. We'll follow up to that based on I mean, Black Bears are down one. Midway through the first period, nothing to panic about, sir. No, and Coach Genron's talking exactly what we've been talking about. He's talking about transition. Transition for those watching is when you have the puck, you lose it, and then the other team grabs it, and now they're heading back in your offensive zone. And if you can do that with speed, you make it very hard for defenders to defend all night when you're constantly coming off turnovers with speed into the offensive zone. It's Verrier out of his own zone. Near side, Kelleher got a chop on it. And that goes into the crowd because he chopped at the same time as Jack Quinlevin, a sophomore from out of Shrewsbury, Mass. So we'll have a neutral zone faceoff. Same two teams tomorrow night, by the way, 7 o'clock. And that will wrap up the regular season series between these two. And I know that Coach Souza, and much like yourself, Pat Foley, trying to downplay the emotions that it means more when it's Maine. But you can't completely deny that no, everyone's amped up a bit more. It's human nature, right? It's human nature. If it's the Super Bowl, it's, it's those guys that <laughs> being interviewed, oh, it's just another game. I don't buy it. It's another game. It's the biggest game. It's the biggest game on their schedule. They get up for it, and they prepare a little differently. Um, th but when you prepare, you have to also look at what you did last week that was successful. How can you implement it in this environment today? Trail Max will enter the Wildcat zone. Leaves it back for Fossier for a shot. Trail Max was in front trying to set a screen. And Robinson's going to argue that it last went off of Trail Max. 
You know, we've talked about UNH in transition, but we can also discount the fact that they've had some great offense zone, zone time when they put pucks in deep, they get a cycle going, they get heavy over pucks, they're putting pucks down into good space, and then they're looking to attack the net. Their offense is not all on transition. They're good at it, but they also have an offensive zone play that, that's deadly as well. New Hampshire wins the draw in its own end. Crookshank will take it off the kick plate along the left wing boards. Can't get around Keeper. Binner will wind it to the near side. Schmidt Vestrup rank wide. Bouncing puck loose. Wise jabbed at it, but Maine recovers. And a chance for Schmidt Vestrup, but the puck bounced off the boards, and Gildon will get there first. Robinson got interfered with. That's a good call. So a delayed penalty coming up against Maine as Schmidt Vestrup will go to the box. Robinson, of course, can't leave his crease yet because Gildon's still behind the net. So Robinson will now head to the bench as the Cats try to get the extra attacker. Gildon, such a good stick handler, comes all the way in by himself. The extra attacker's on the ice. Maine needs a touch-up. Bauer can't break free. Vela lost it to Robbins. And that brings the stoppage, and we'll have the first power play, and it all results of this. Yeah, this is a great call. You have to, Robinson has to, who is that? That was uh, Jacob. I'm going to use Jacob as his <laughs> first name, not the last, but he has to avoid him. He's he's in tight. He's got his head up. You cannot make contact with the goalie. We call that the fair catch. Football, it's, it's the same way here. You have to avoid the goalie. Jacob Schmidt Vestrup is a freshman from Charlotte, London, Denmark. I was told he's only the fourth college hockey player from the country of Denmark, the only active player. Yeah, you don't hear much from Denmark. Certainly the Scandinavian countries you do, but not so much Denmark. Later on, we'll try to show you about the international feel of this main roster. They have players from a number of different countries, and Coach Gendron says it's terrific as players learn from each other's cultures. But this is a Wildcat power play presented by Unitil. Unitil energy for life, trying to build on a 1-0 lead. It's Anthony Wise over to Brendan Van Riemsdyk. Van Riemsdyk carries below the dots, then back to the hash mark. Wise on the point. Van Riemsdyk turns, fires. Vela could not get a deflection. Wise holds in. Van Riemsdyk up the boards for Pearson. The other Pearson from Maine was on him, so he goes opposite side. Grasso, Vela. Behind the goal line, Van Riemsdyk to Jackson Pearson. Van Riemsdyk at the half wall, inching in closer. Chase Pearson got a stick on it. The Wildcats still in control in the offensive zone. Down low, Vela. He tried the quick turnaround on the forehand, but Swayman denies. And it's out of the zone, courtesy of Westerland's clear. Yeah, Maine's looking to push down on the half ball and then attack down by, uh, put some pressure when the puck gets down below the goal line when UNH is trying to move that puck on the foul play. But certainly I'm sure this is a first test for them. I'm sure they changed their penalty kill up when they came in here. Do they pressure? Do they front pucks? Here comes Gildon. Tried to feed it to Crookshank. Pass was behind him. And Robbins, the New Hampshire native from Nashua, able to clear it. Down to 20 seconds remaining on the penalty against Schmidt Vestrup who was called for interference at 13-28. It's Charlie Kelleher across the main line. He got tripped up, and Trailmax will carry out. Here's Rob Michael. Michael centers it, and that got broken up as Quinlevin was thinking about getting a shorthanded forehand bid from that mid-slot area. Maine has killed off the penalty. As Schmidt Vestrup back on the ice. Crookshank goes around Michael. Quinlevin on the near corner. Gildon in his own zone. He's being pestered by Schmidt Vestrup. Up the boards. Peepers on the near side. McAdams chips it. Sheffalu has it. Wildcats have numbers. Four on two. Sheffalu to Nazarian. Return pass broken up by the stick of Mulebauer. Sheffalu back to it. Down low. Nazarian shoots. Tried to go upstairs. And Swayman is able to make the stop. It's a 1-0 Wildcat lead. 3.54 to go. Opening period from the Whittemore Center. Right out the win, 2019. So look at the University of Maine Black Bears bench. We told you about the international delight. Take a look at some of these countries represented. 
that's quite a culture that the Black Bears have up there in Orono. Yeah, absolutely. I think Coach Denron talked about it. He appreciates it in the locker room. There's a lot of diverse backgrounds where they're able to look at different things that work in their culture and bring it in and form one team at uh, the University of Maine. So never a bad thing to have a pull from all types of different junior leagues to make, your, uh, make up your roster. And he was quick to point out that even though these players come from across the big pond, they had a chance to settle here, play junior hockey, get used to the United States. The only one who came direct was Emil Westerlin from Sweden. And now in his sophomore year, he certainly is acclimated to the college game. Yeah, I think that transition phase is eased by them playing junior hockey in North America, whether it's USHL in the United States or British Columbia Hockey League. They're able to get a feel for what uh, some of their teammates are like, the North American style of hockey, the culture outside of hockey. And then when they get to a university or college, they're able to settle in with their team a little easier than if they were just coming right over from Europe. UNH has a freshman from Sweden, Philip Engelras, who will be eligible to play next year, but they say he has been a terrific guy on this team, such a big part of it. You don't see him play because he's not eligible this season, but there every single day in practice, big part of the team, and they're very optimistic about his future. Liam Blackburn, pretty optimistic about his present as he tried to crossover move. Taken off his stick, though, nicely by Sirota. The other way, centering pass by Fossier was bidding for trail max, but it got broken up to the far wall. Black Bears keep in on the forward check, only to see Crookshank take it away. And he'll lift it out and pin the Black Bears back. Stretch pass Michael right on the tape of Fossier. The entry to trail max. Mass a block of that shot. Scrum for it near boards. Grasso chips to center. Van Riemsdyk stretches it out to Vela. Vela comes across. Backhand shot wide. Mass comes in aggressively, but the puck still squirts out to center. McKinnon across the red line will bank it off glass. Vela gives chase. He's met by Butala. Collision between the two. They both stay on their skates. Grasso finds Vela looking to stuff it in from the far post, and there's a quick whistle. It's a great job by UNH. We talked about their offensive zone play. This is a staple of their hockey, too. It's not just transition. They can grind it out on you. They can stay down below the goal line, use the back of the net, tuck it in, try to push it behind that uh, UMaine goalie. And I certainly know that uh, most UNH teams have more than just their one transition type to offense. They've always had a second layer where they're able to produce down low. They're able to do more than just use their speed. And, and that's a credit to the type of player that will grind it out. He'll get into the hot areas of the ice. He'll take a beating to get the puck to the net. And I think UNH and this team has it. Pop the face off. Varrier along the left wing wall. Plays it in deep. Kelleher and Jackson Pearson for UNH. Patrick Shea in the mix for the Black Bears. Pressing Pearson along the far boards, and the puck ends up near side and out to the neutral zone where Boyd is on it. Boyd, the quick re-entry to Pearson, tries to spin around a binner check, finds the trailing Nazarian. Kelleher got bumped by Muehlbauer, recovers. One-timer, Varrier block. Boyd to it. Again, it's Varrier on the left wing. Dishes it to Pearson. Keeper trying to jab at it. Maine does clear. Bounces to the Wildcat zone. Tough puck for Boyd to clear out. Does enough to get it to center ice. Westerland has it stuck in the jersey for a moment. It popped out. He recovered and works it back to Sirota. Doherty enters in the near far side. Chips it by Gildon, but Boyd is over there. Black Bears attacking behind the goal line here, down by a goal. Aaron Azarian has the game's only goal at 7.20 of this first period. Black Bears looking to get the equalizer late. Sirota in the high slot. Throws it just wide of the stick side. And then Robinson took a swipe to move it to the near glass. Along the dash of battle. Maine is on it first. Out to Michaels. Got some space. He shoots. Robinson save. Sirota. A blast. Robinson just got a piece of that one. Van Riemsdyk, far side D. Behind the net, Gildon. He'll skate out of harm's way as there's 20 seconds remaining before the intermission. 
Aaron Azarian will be our guest at the end of the period with Natalie Nori. Still down in no hurry. Starts the breakout. Wise. Comes across. Centering bid blocked by Trailmax. And that will do it for the first period. Even game, Maine out shooting UNH at last glance by an 11 to 9 mark, but it's Aaron Azarian's goal at 720 of the first, assisted by Pearson and Kelleher, that has the Wildcats in front, Patrick. Yeah, I would think that shots aren't indicative of the style of play and, and who's favoring that period. I thought UNH carried the play. They got to be happy going in after one period, up 1 0. They got off to a great start. I think it's their style of play. I think UNH has to make a few adjustments here to come back in the second period. Well, before we talk about the adjustments, let's talk about what it was like in the first period with the senior Aaron Nazarian. He's downstairs with Natalie. And in front of an explosive crowd, can you walk me through what you saw out there? Yeah, so, um, you know, obviously it's a goal. So, uh, you know, every guy on the ice is responsible. Um, Charlie made a great chip at uh, our blue line. And then, you know, Pearson made a great play on the 2 one And I was just fortunate to, you know, be there to put it in the net. Jackson Pearson seemed like he really kept his composure when feeding you that pass. How do you think your chemistry has developed over the course of the season? Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's going really well. I mean, um, we've been playing well together. We've been just, uh, you know, just working hard and clicking and uh, making plays out there. So, you know, just continue to do the same stuff. Thank you, Eric. Best of luck in the second. Back to you. Thanks, Natalie Nazarian with his 10th goal. He has a point now in four straight games, and he has the Wildcats in front of the Black Bears. 1-0 in Durham. Terrific atmosphere inside the Whittemore Center and the Wildcats with a 1-0 lead over Maine. Well, tonight's game night, but as you learn from this behind-the-scenes look inside the UNH hockey program, the preparation starts well before the puck drops on a Friday night. UNH hockey is part of the fabric of the university. This program has a long story and rich tradition. There's a lot that goes into a UNH hockey game. You're going to kind of have to time it, probably right as Max picks up. There's a lot of behind the scenes things that go on Any questions? before the game. My goal is for the guys to, to feel relaxed, feel that all their preparation's been done. A lot of the guys get here pretty early, probably two and a half, three hours early before a game. A lot of guys tape their sticks, listen to music, just kind of get in their own zone. Early on in the night, I like to listen to like, some country music, just kind of keep it pretty mellow and relaxed. And then as kind of the time goes through, you know, you listen to some faster paced songs. Or... Everyone's got a job to do. And then we have a team right. meeting an hour and a half before the game. We kind of discuss our plan and the stuff we've been working on from the practice and where we're going to implement the game. Hey, you got to get everything right now. After that team meeting, we go up for warm up and, you know, we get loose. And then a lot of the guys like to get together and play a game of two-touch, soccer-type game. I'd say it's always good to be a little loose before games. I tend to be a little looser. Once everyone gets in the locker room about an hour before the game to start getting dressed, um, it gets pretty serious. And it's just, just the music, kind of everyone's to themselves, doing their own little things. Everyone's a little different. Our F1 is always swinging with speed. You know, I talk to the assistants, what are some key points to being successful tonight or in this period? But we try to build those key points up throughout the course of the week leading into the game and then reinforce those before we uh, hit the ice. Angus, Patrick, Anthony, Benton, we'll be in the net. Let's go. Okay. Down in the tunnel before the game, just getting fired up, ready to go. A lot of guys have like different handshakes. I think I got a handshake with pretty much every guy on the team. There's something that you do or something that you say before you go on, and that's what makes being a teammate so great. It's, it's just a special bond. The ability uh, to coach here is uh, truly uh, a dream come true for me because I have such a great sense of the history and I understand the traditions and the values of this program. And for me, as a coach, that's one of the greatest traditions. It's passing on the history of our program to our current players. 
When we come in between periods, we'll look at video. Now that video, it may differ depending on what's happened in the period. Maybe it was a goal you gave up. Maybe you need to change the way you're trying to break the puck out or four check. There's all, that, that's always evolving. It doesn't matter if it's in the first two minutes or the last two minutes. Usually coach right. will come in and talk and try and fix some things that we need to work on, go over some things that we've been doing well throughout the game. And then guys will just kind of get refocused and ready to go for the next period. Love playing at the Whittemore Center. Definitely cool to see all the kids out there that support us. I remember being that kid looking up to older players and you know wishing one day I'd be in that spot and, and you know thankfully and luckily I had that opportunity to do that. Fans in general are just great out here. <laughs> Throwing the fish on the ice after the first goal is definitely one of the, the major things a lot of fans look for uh, when we score. Fish is definitely a very cool part of the game. I don't know many schools that do things like that. Having that come out is always, uh, it's always, it's always exciting, and you definitely want to be the guy who tries to get that fish out. Hockey East is the premier conference in college hockey, and on any given night, anyone can beat anybody. And our players understand that. There are no easy nights in our league. At the end of the day, the best part of playing hockey at UNH is the opportunity to play in front of our fans and our students. For a cycle across the middle, and a shot to score. And I think that's what really separates our program from all the rest. Benton Mass with the game winner in overtime. Hold on, hold on, hold on, two, three, four, and you're ready to pull up and dance your friend. And when we die, we're going to ask you to dance, so it's run our hands, run our hands. Xfinity X5, a more powerful way to stay connected. It gives you super fast speeds for all your devices, enhanced coverage, and lets you control your network with the X5 app. It's the ultimate Wi-Fi experience. Xfinity X5, simple, easy, awesome. Xfinity x -Fi gives you the speed, coverage, and control you need. Manage your Wi-Fi network from anywhere when you download the x app today. Center first intermission. The Zamboni's doing their job. It's one nothing UNH. Before we go to the second period, let's relive some of the highlights of period number one. Yeah, I thought the Pearson line was the top line for UNH with Aaron Nazari and Pearson and Kelleher. And you know, we talked about they were able to not only strike on transition as they did on this two on one with a one timer by you know Nazari. Just a great job getting that puck off quick, freezing the goalie. But they were able to possess the puck down low. In when UNH had fault in their offensive zone time and turned the puck over, Robinson was there to make the big saves for them. He's an athletic big kid. He was able to find himself back in the crease and get a piece of this. It's unconventional goaltending, but it, it makes a difference when you're an athlete in that net to be able to come out with these big time stops. Mike Robinson, a shutout last week against UConn on Saturday night. He shut out Maine through one here tonight at the Whittemore Center. Back with more on Nesson.
liftoff of the Atlas V with MMS. Sometimes you're ready. Joe, ready? Ready. Sometimes you're not. Ready? Sometimes you can't wait for that moment. And sometimes it sneaks up on you. Ready. But whenever you're ready, or ready as you'll ever be, we're ready as we always are. From the big moments to the small ones and everything in between, we'll handle the financials. Service Credit Union, ready to serve. Grocery shopping, taking the kids to soccer, and getting Buddy to the vet on time. You have so many things to think about, and for a long time, you've been thinking about switching to natural gas. You know it is the most convenient and reliable fuel source. It's versatile, providing fuel for heating, cooking, and clothes drying. And no need to worry about monitoring fuel tanks. So why not make this the year? The year you stop thinking about the benefits of natural gas and start living with them. Call Unitil today at 888-4-UNITIL. Online at unitil.com slash switch. All right, back at the Whittemore Center, time for us to get a live stat update brought to you by UNH Analytics and Data Science. All right, Patrick, let's take a quick look at these. And what yeah, I don't think you? special teams had a, a, a factor in that period, but certainly the shots on net are not indicative of how I thought that period went. UNH dominated, I thought, offensively. Maine had some shots, but they were from the outside. And, you know, you look at the save, same thing. I thought UNH carried the play in that game, uh, excuse me, that period. I think UMaine has to make some adjustments coming out playing on the big sheet for the second period. Live stat update brought to you by UNH Analytics and Data Science. Apply now and prepare yourself for one of the world's most in-demand careers. Find out more at unh.edu slash analytics. Well, just a few minutes ago, Brendan Glasstein had a chance to talk with Maine assistant coach Alfie Michaud. Let's go downstairs to Brendan. Hey, Mike, thanks so much. The 1999 NCAA tournament player uh, MVP. He said this brings back old times. Asked him about that first period and what happened on that first goal. He said the goalie got pinched. Swayman has to have some help from his D. They've got to get back on the offensive end. Got to continue to push the puck and put pressure on Mike Robinson. Mike. All right, thanks, Brendan. Alfie Misho, yes, indeed. Every Wildcat fan, every Black Bear fan remembers that man. 2003, UNH beat Maine. Final weekend of the regular season to win the regular season championship, and then Anaheim, California. Be sure what a better week. That's right. <laughs> we try to remember the good times when we played at Wit at the Wit, not not the series in Anaheim, but certainly this rivalry dates back to not only the ones that are on the schedule, but there's been some unbelievable playoff NCAA games that these two teams have played against each other. It just enriched the, the the regular season scheduled games that they have on their on their schedule every year. Certainly a uh, big time college hockey rivalry. Well, going into the history of this rivalry, we give you a little bit more of an idea. That's the last ten, and as you can see, the pendulum has swung each way. Wildcats had the better of it in the 15-16 era, and then Maine had a pretty good stretch until that last game. Just 11 days ago, a 4-4 tie. And this one, one to nothing our count. After one period of play, Mike Murphy with three-time UNH captain Patrick Foley. Your voice was so recognizable in your first broadcast with us in Essen that Cindy Misho, longtime athletic trainer at UNH, she knew instantly Patrick. <laughs> Cindy was a big part of my, uh, my rehab success here at UNH, as were many people that were in the training staff. Period number two finds the Black Bears attacking the goal to the near side, and Maine has the early advantage, although Pearson could not maintain possession. Van Riemsdyk chips it ahead, and here comes Patrick Grasso. He's got Vela in front. Good job by Rob Michael, though, to get the stick in there and break up what looked like a pretty strong chance developing. It's Gildon, far side. Winds it to the near end. Michael keeps in. Gildon, far goal line. 
Looking for the home run. Vela got a piece. Van Riemsdyk into the zone to the trailing Grasso. Van Riemsdyk, bottom of the circle shot. Save it, got behind Swayman, but he is able to pin it down before it could cross the goal line. Yeah, that was um, that was a great opportunity by UNH. I think um, I think the shot was just behind him. A little bit of a redirect. Nice help on the part of Alexis Binner, 16, and then Grasso gets flattened by Butala. Those are those opportunities where you have to get the shot on net that's bouncing behind the goalie, and you got to pound guys down at that net to get that second opportunity, put a stick on that that's just sitting behind the goalie. Swayman coming off the career high, 53 saves at Alphon last Saturday when Maine knocked off Hockey East leading and nationally second-ranked UMass. So they're coming off that big high. Wildcats, meanwhile, at home have been playing so well, undefeated in their last six here at the Wit, 5-0-1 in that stretch, including the win against UConn here last Saturday. Doherty from the main line. Can't get around Kelleher and Benton Mass. Mass will skate in. His swing pass comes just out of the zone. Schmidt Vestrup chips it toward the Wildcat goal. Pearson gets there before Robbins can. McKinnon lost it out in front. Quick bid for Robbins, but Robinson makes the stop. Boy, oh boy, big game, no doubt about it. Two points on the line, four points all of this weekend. And what does it all mean? Let's go to Natalie Denori to set up the playoff picture at Hockey East. Natalie? UNH spoke a lot about the playoff race this past week in press conference. Since only eight teams make it to the Hockey East playoffs this year, the competition is high. UNH is ranked seventh, only two points ahead of Maine, as you said. So there are huge points on the line for both teams this weekend. Back to you. Thanks, Natalie. The first game ending in a tie, so these two will decide who wins the season series. You always wonder about tiebreakers, things of that nature, but it does make the regular season that much more important, knowing you're not allowed to finish below eighth and still get a chance in March. Absolutely. I think that was one of the, the benefits of going back to just getting the top eight teams. Is it creates a better environment during the regular season for every game to, to matter. There's no nights off. Certainly there were competitive games when all the teams made the playoffs, but I think it makes it even that more of a highlight that no, that these teams know the top eight are going, that's it. But some people are going to be left at home. And, and that motivates people to have every point that they can possibly get. Every team who's out here fighting for points, it means that much more importance to their season. Main wins the draw. Becker from the red line elevated one. Robinson gloved it and dropped it just before a whistle could come out. Eric McAdams leaves it for Sheffaloo. Tries to find Esposito into the right corner. Can't get around Becker. And Becker's got some space in the far wall. He'll throw it out to Perez. Perez chops, second effort, forces it behind the UNH goal. Sheffaloo leaves it for Esposito, denied right at the main line, so out to the center zone. UNH regroups. Esposito on the entry, stood up by Michael. And then it comes to the Wildcat end. Black Bears will bring on some fresh legs, and Wise will curl back. Anthony Wise through center, into the zone, still possesses all the way in. Couldn't get a shot off. Michael ties him up. Michael with the takeaway. Off the glass, center ice, Gildon. Avoids Fossier's stick check and goes even deeper in his own zone. Fossier blew a tire. Gildon goes around. Pearson. Now the diagonal feed. Crookshank. Chips and chases. Met by Michael. Chase Pearson for Maine. Loses it right in front of his own net. Crookshank took a swipe, couldn't get a clean piece of it. And it's out to the neutral zone, and now the Wildcat end. But that was a dangerous loss of possession for Maine. Yeah, you want to take care of that puck in front of your own uh, your own net. And certainly, I think that uh... Blackburn found Crookshank. He was taken down. Fans wanted a call, naturally, as Alexis Binner instead had the fine play. And it's Binner who has it on his stick. The lead pass trail Max. And from center ice, he got a piece and redirected it right to Mike Robinson. You know, back to making that play in front of your own net. As soon as you come from behind the net, you want to get rid of that puck as fast as possible. Get it to the outside. Have an outlet. You do not want to be 
dusted pucks off in front of your own net. It's a recipe for disaster. So face-off will be to Robinson's left. It's Robbins for Maine. Vela for UNH. McKinnon behind the net. Bounces out in front. Big opportunity. Doherty couldn't put it on goal. Schmidt Vestrup on that left wing. From the point, the wrister. That got blocked after being sent in from the point by Keeper. Near boards, Robbins. Behind the net, the intercept for McKinnon. Van Riemsdyk finds Vela, and Vela gains some speed at center. Grasso gains the line. Rister blocked by Butala, and that will go over the glass and out of play. You know, we talked about the importance of faceoffs earlier in this game. And if you look at that last opportunity by Maine, it all started actually off a, a faceoff win by UNH, but UNH has to do a better job of holding guys up. When you win that faceoff, your defenseman can't have you main guys breathing down their throat, and that's what happened. Timmy Doherty come right off the line, was able to get the puck back, and then they generate offense from that. And that's off a win, a clean possession win by UNH. Wildcats lead it 1-0 on Aaron Azarian's 10th of the year at 7.20 of the first, assisted by Pearson and Kelleher. Robinson's coming off four straight shutout periods in net. Nazarian throws it across to Kelleher, who scores! 2-0 UNH! You know what, great job here by Aaron Nazarian to freeze this frame again. You're going to freeze the goaltender by thinking he's going to shoot, and he slides it over. It's almost a replica of, of his own goal, but he's the, he's the playmaker on this one, not the shooter. Just does an unbelievable job of freezing. Freezing the goaltender to make sure that he bites on him and then slides it over. It's a great job. We talked about how many two-on-ones you actually see in the game of hockey. We've seen two tonight, and it's been two goals for UNH. Making the most of the opportunities, Charlie Kelleher now has a point in five straight games. Two goals, three assists, five points in that stretch. In fact, he scored last Saturday against UConn. So that's back-to-back -back games with a goal for Charlie Kelleher, the sophomore from Longmeadow, Mass. And for Nair's area now, he and Kelleher each have a point. Yeah, Excuse and I think me, that line is. I think that line is popping tonight, and they've been uh, in some critical opportunities tonight. Anthony Wise a wrist shot, swam in a save. At the behind the net, he has to bat it out of midair. To Fossier near side. Maine will come out. So now the Black Bears trying to dig out of a two-goal deficit. This is what happened at Alphonse Arena, where Maine built the two-goal lead at home against UNH, only to see the Wildcats fight back in an eventual 4-4 tie. Binner, the pass finds Fossier. Trail Max in the zone, but he backs out to center. And that forces Keeper to just throw it in. Hey, Mike, you make an important point there. UNH was on the opposite end of this up at Orono, and if anything, they should come out of that game knowing that this is a 60-minute hockey game. They're up 2 to nothing. 14 minutes to go in the second period. By no means is this game even close to being over. There's so much more hockey left, so much more that can, be, can happen. We're talking about two of the best atmospheres for student fans in college hockey. Red Gendron thinks that the overhang and the balcony at Alphon Arena is the best. You look at the whiteout, the wit, the cat pack right there. Mike Souza swears by this as being the best fan base. But each coach will say, you have to put that stuff out of your mind when you're playing the game. You can never play to the score. Yeah, absolutely. You have to stay within the framework, the game plan. What you set in place all week in practice can't be flushed out by what you see in the stands or the noise or people heckling you. Got him his bank one and nearly got to it. He's got Scheffler with him as well from behind that main goal. It's the fourth line for the Wildcats. Boyd tried to return the pass for Scheffler instead. Behind the net, Butala. Banks off the far dasher. Boyd will keep in. Fanned on a shot. And this leads to an opportunity the other way for the Black Bears. Here's Quinlevin, but he's pressed against the far wall by Boyd. Keeper gives chase. Chips it away from Verrier. Robbins backhands it. Schmidt Vestrup at the hash marks. Hands it back to Robbins, who scored two goals in the first meeting between these two teams. 
The snapper from the top got blocked. Nice job by a sliding McAdams to get a body in there. And block Sam Becker's bid. Cross ice pass looking for Doherty, but Esposito with the good stick. Lead Sheffaloo in the neutral zone. Grasso avoids the Mulebauer check. Mulebauer now on it. Can't be handled by Robin, so Vela from the red line backs it up to McKinnon. Grasso is coming near side, so that will go down for an icing call with 12.33 remaining here in the middle period. Wildcats leading it 2 to nothing. If you're Mike Souza, Coach Souza on the bench, you're, you're preaching to your players that they have to stay on task. There is no determined player on this team that's going to take us off our train track of making sure that we stay on our game plan. We don't deter each shift. No individual. We're going to stay to what we put as our game plan and make sure that we stay on task every single shift. Grasso looking for Vela, broken up by Michael, and he leads Maine a three-on-three three the other way. It's Shea trying to cross for Westerlin behind him. Binner at the left half boards. McKinnon looks to break it out near side, ahead to Grasso. Grasso gets rocked over by the Black Bear bench. Now he's right back on the play. He'll shovel it across the mass for a quick wrister. That's why. Fossier at center. The drop pass finds Peeper. Peeper threw it towards Shea, caught a piece of his leg. Van Riemsdyk will track it down near side. Uses the glass to feather it to center. Mass from McKinnon. Grasso at the end of a shift gets a piece to avoid an icing call, and the Wildcats will change up. Chase Pearson angles through center. Pass to the left wing, bounce over trail max stick as he was breaking in. Out to the point, Binner, he winds, drives, and forces a pad save from Robinson. Fossier, down low, intercept by Jackson Pearson. Here comes Nazarian and Kelleher again. The return pass goes wide, and this is going to be a penalty coming up against Maine. So the Wildcats will go on a unitil power play when we return to the Whittemore Center. Pretty happy group right there as their Wildcats have a 2-0 lead over the Black Bears on right out the win. Ken Ralph is joining us now down on the ice, the athletic director at the University of Maine. 20th anniversary of Whiteout the Wit, your first experience. What's it been like? I'll tell you what, it's, it's really been a lot of fun. This is a great hockey rivalry, and to, to see a full building, to see teams playing well, uh, this is a lot of fun. What's it been like as far as your first year with the Black Bears and getting to know the program? You were named AD back in September of last year. Well, as a New England native, it's fun to be back in the, in the region. Uh, I'm really enjoying my time at Maine. It's such a beautiful place to live. I'm enjoying our students. We've got a great staff. It's going to be a great one. What's your relationship like with Red Gendron, the, uh, the head coach of these Black Bears? Seems to have him going in the right direction. Well, I've known Red for quite a while. Uh, you know, we go back uh, a number of years back to when he was the coach of the Albany River Rats in the AHL. So it's fun to work with him. We've got a great staff. We're having some fun. Thanks for being with us. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Thanks for having me. Mike. All right, thank you, Brendan. You and uh, take it easy there with Ken because uh, Maine and UNH are starting to get sick of each other, keeping it civil on one side, but here by the Maine Black Bear net, anger starting to rise to the surface. Yeah, some great opportunities by UNH, and with that comes uh, some intense action down at the net. Maine seems to uh, have been on discipline there and finds themselves on a five on three now where if you're UNH, this is a big time, big time opportunity. Up to nothing to get the third goal here. Make sure that everything you do on this five on three is done with purpose. Maine wins the important draw though and clears it down the ice. It is five on three, Unitil power play. Unitil energy for life. Trailmax was sitting for cross checking at 848. Now he's joined by Michael. Killed on. Cars behind the net, all the way to the far boards. Kelleher. Blackburn, who has the 15 game point streak, longest in the country this season, in front for Nazarian, who already has two points, but not this time, as it ends up in the forehand of Brady Keeper. He sends it down. When you're in a five on three, you need to let the puck do the work. And that means you have to get in position so that you can move that puck and make those defenders stretch out of their middle of the ice coverage and hope that seams and shot lanes open up 
for you to get shots down to the net. Kelleher, for looking for Nazarian. Back to Kelleher. Behind the goal line, Blackburn. Two-man game now. Kelleher sneaks in front. That goes through the crease. Grasso on the far side. Blackburn goal line extended. Kelleher wheels and deals back to the wing. Now a one-timer killed on. That goes wide. And Maine sends it down. The first penalty is over, so Trail Max comes out. It's a traditional five on four for the next 30 seconds. Kelleher moves across. Grasso to Van Riemsdyk. Boyd out of the zone. How big a lift would it be for Maine to kill this off, Patrick? Yeah, and that's the flip side. You kill off a five on three, that creates momentum for you. And uh, UNH has had a few hiccups here on this five on three. They seem to. But Grasso to Crookshank. It bounced off the stick, hit the top of the goal, and ends up behind the net. What a break. Here comes Maine the other way. Robbins into the zone. Poke check, boy. Black Bears are back to full strength. Still trailing it 2 0 with 8.25 remaining. Boyd to the center zone. A slap shot from the blue line. And the save is made by Jeremy Swayman. He's been battle tested. Maine kills off the five on three. Can they come back from a two goal deficit here at the Wintermore Center on this Friday night? There's the Maine Black Bears bench. Red Gendron, the head coach, hands in pockets. I'm sure he's not thinking about this particular statistic, but here we are getting late in the second period. And stats don't usually lie, Patrick. Maine, when leading after two, is 7-0-1, but when trailing after two, yet to win, 0-11-1. Yeah, and it's it's that much harder when you're on the road. I don't know what the stats look like when you're trailing going into the third period on the road, but it's certainly, it's a different stat to, uh, to be aware of, but if you're looking at Red Gendron, you're hoping that that 5-on-3 creates, you know, you killed the 5-on-3, now you have some momentum. Can we get get some life back in our bench and try to create some offense and momentum from it? Will McKinnon had the wrist shot from the point off the faceoff that Swayman was able to stop, and off the next faceoff, Maine comes across with a terrific job by Doherty to stay on side. Meanwhile, Schmidt vests up on the near side. Tried to cross, but got a bad angle on it. It ends up at center ice where Butala retrieves, goes D to D to keeper, and back to Butala. Center ice, a lot of Wildcats. They quickly pounce and come back across with Sheffaloo. Esposito skated right into a check from keeper. Shea will leave it for Doherty. Schmidt Svestrup, soft pass at center. Gildon got in the way, broke it up. Main regroups in its own end. I think the leaders on both sides right now play a critical role in this game. If you're UNH, you have to have your captain, your leaders, stressing the importance of staying with our game plan, not deterring. If you're UMaine, you have to have Chase Pearson and his crew saying, hey, guys, let's go. We've got seven minutes to go in the second period. Let's get back to our game, try to get some offense, stick with it. So critical, I think, that both sides of this puck have their leadership at the forefront of what they're doing right now. Alexis Binner tried to wrist one in, and caught a piece of Grasso, and then went out of play. 7.02 left here in the second period. And that comes with the play on the ice, but it also comes with the bench demeanor. You know, you can look up and down both benches right now, and you can see different types of environments. You can see UNH kind of just steady. They're, they're, they're sticking to it. You can see UNH uh, you main kind of looking around like, hey, we've got some guys up. Let's get going. Is there a panic on the bench? That's where your leadership has to make sure everything's stable. Stick with it. Not panic. Get out for your next shift. Make something happen. Main on the four check, looking to keep the puck in the zone, but this time it's on Van Riemsdyk's stick. He'll swing to Grasso. Grasso veering towards the net. He shoots. Swayman is saved. Van Riemsdyk a backhander wide. And a whistle as we have Binner and Grasso exchanging pleasantries directly behind the goal line. Yeah, and I think Patrick Grasso has, has been very good tonight on the puck. He's able to manage the puck well. He finds open guys better than anybody in this league, I think. And he's dangerous when that puck's on his stick, and Patrick Grasso is uh, 
you know, one guy that I think's made a difference up here at UNH in only his sophomore year, but I think with him, Veller, and Van Riemsdyk, they have that complementary scoring line to the Nazarian line, and that's where when you're defending against UNH, you've got a, you get two really top lines there, that, three lines with Blackburn that you gotta be aware of. All three are capable of scoring offensively. Sirota a steal on the near side of the neutral zone for Maine. Muhlbauer tries to thread the needle to Peeper. Verrier the takeaway. Out at center ice. That's where Shea is able to track it down. Shea, one of a few Black Bears. Draft property, Patrick Shea with Florida Panthers. Jeremy Swayman, the goaltender, our Nesson audience. I'm sure taking notice, he's a Boston Bruins draft choice. And Chase Pearson, we've talked about so much. Drafted by the Detroit Red Wings. At center ice, Keeper goes to the high side of the rink, and then Binner will throw it through. Hawk is on it. He'll backhand it to the near side. Battle ensues out to Keeper at the point. Keeper Rister, that got blocked by Pearson, redirected wide. Robinson went down again. Earlier, Maine was called for an interference when Robinson was taken down. I honestly didn't see what led to the sequence. Hawk, a Rister from the near boards. Pearson blocks, it's out of play, and that brings us to a stoppage. Let's go back and take another look at what Mike Robinson saw when he went down. Daniel Perez might have been pushed into him. Either way, it's 2-0 Wildcats. We're playing five-on-five five hockey when we come back. There you have a pretty good look at the Wildcat bench. Head coach Mike Souza talking it over with associate head coach Glenn Stewart. Right now it's New Hampshire 2, Maine nothing. Still 5-15 remaining in this second period. Face-off in the Wildcat zone. It's Cruikshank who will chip it out. Played right back in by Muhlbauer. Bouncing around the center zone, Crookshank. Didn't have any numbers with him, so it's centered by Schmitz Vestrup. Doherty across the line, nice pass. He returns the favor, but spinning and throwing it well wide was Sorota. He helped get the puck into the zone, but then helped the Wildcats come the other way. Crookshank, a quick backhand bid. Saves Swayman, and down goes Blackburn in his bid for a rebound. Again, Liam Blackburn, 15 straight games with at least one point, longest streak in the nation. He doesn't have any points right now because it's been that Kelleher, Pearson, Nazarian line doing the damage here in this 2-0 game. And that's what we talked about, that UNH has three strong lines that you have to be aware of all the time that offensively can contribute to their success. And whether it's that Blackburn line, whether it's Pearson line or Vela's line, Nazarian, combo of all of those. It's, it's difficult to defend this three, uh, those three lines. There's Fossier with a chance, but Trailmax got his body in the way trying to set a screen. Muhlbauer sprung that play with a great pass from blue line to blue line. Looking in front, Michael was there. Pearson couldn't find him as McKinnon got a stick in there, and it's lofted out by the Wildcats. Take away Jackson Pearson at the red line. Pearson moves in. Here comes Kelleher. Back to McKinnon for a drive right into the glove hand of Swayman. I think UNH's defensemen have done a great job tonight, whether it's McKinnon there. You saw Wise a couple times during the game tonight. They've just got the pucks low to high. They've just got pucks down to the net. And I know there was no rebound created there by McKinnon's shot, but I th they're not handling the puck, risking turnovers at the blue offensive blue line. They're putting pucks in areas, putting it low or getting it to the net which either creates a face-off or another opportunity down at the UMaine net. Thought they've done a great job of, of making that happen tonight. Face-off won by UNH to Verrier from the goal line. Utala got a stick in there. Far side, Westerlin can't clear. Van Riemsdyk keeps it alive. Utala absorbs the hip check from Vela, but it's out to the neutral zone and chipped forward by Keeper. Westerlin gets to it along the kick plate, thrown out of the way by Boyd, but he stays on the puck. Keeps it in on the cycle. Shea with Keeper, but Grasso sneaks between the two and the Wildcats will break out. Van Riemsdyk on the return pass from Grasso. Chips into the zone, forces Butala back under three minutes to play in the second period. Quinlevin. 
hit by Varrier, but gets right back to the buck. Quinlivan behind the net, wind around. In front, he's got Hawk, forehand bid, knocked down Robinson, even with bodies in front of him. Van Riemsdyk, long pass Vela, and Vela's broken up, and there's going to be a penalty upcoming, and this one will go against the Wildcats for the first time tonight. Well, I think you saw Mike Robinson make probably the biggest save of the night. And it was just uh, a point blank opportunity for Maine. Might have even got deflected in front of the net there, but. You see it again. Quinlivan sets it up. Hawk is the man who takes the shot at number 30. Westerland, along with Boyd in the way. How Robinson saw that, I don't know. Yeah, when Hawk comes down the middle of the ice and he's point blank like that, for the goalie to be in position, just in position alone is a big deal. And Robinson was able to come up with the save, get his body on it, whether it's deflected or not. But I think Vela probably lost a little discipline there, taking the penalty at the end of that shift. Frustrated he didn't get the puck uh, through the defenseman's leg. But Umaine now will have an opportunity on the power play. First one for the Black Bears here today. Binner. Looking for Pearson, Joe Sacco got a stick in there, deflects it high in the air along the near boards. Keeper down for Trail Max. Curls towards the middle, Sacco the steal, and he'll backhand it out. Keeper from Binner. The re entry, Fossier left side. Pearson back to Keeper. Binner, Keeper at the point. Through traffic and right into the bread basket of Robinson. You know, I like Coach Gendron's response this week in the call we had with him when he talks about the success of his power play and who might be contributing more and what are the keys to it. Are there any players that have been a, a big contributor to it? And he had the Bill Belichick answer, no. <laughs> it's been a group effort. He, he had nobody he wanted to say was contributing to the success on his power play. I think it talks a lot about Coach Gendron and his mindset of how he approaches the game, how he approaches his team. This is a group effort. This is not one player that makes us better or our power play more successful. And it was interesting to hear that, that comment from him this week. Well, he's a man when he speaks, you listen, because he's won at every level. A lot of championship rings in that closet. Black Bears control, still on the power play for another 45 seconds. Shot from the left circle thrown in by Doherty, and that got blocked in front. Schmidt Vestra. Cross ice opportunity. That time it was blocked down by Boyd as he knocked down the Sirota attempt. Kept in by Michael to Sirota on the left wing boards. Sirota carries to the hash marks. Michael at the far point. Sirota, edge of the circle, carries it down low. Got Shea on the cusp of the crease. Quickly to the point. Michael trying to find some space. Doherty was looking for a tip and ends up going wide. Doherty looking to smack it out to Schmidt. Vestrup near boards. Doherty had his pocket picked by Pearson. And the power play ends for Maine as Vela's right back under the ice for the final 25 seconds. And Schmidt's Vestrup goes across the way. A long feed misses everybody. This will be an icing against Maine. And a faceoff will come in the main zone. Good kill there by UNH. I thought they did a great job of keeping that puck outside. And you can tell they want to push down on the half wall and get that puck. They'd rather see the puck down below the goal line than have a top where they can operate and have more options to the net. I thought uh, UNH did a great job on the kill. 20 seconds left in zone faceoff. Wise through traffic. Swim in the save. He wasn't quite sure it was there, but the whistle gets to him before Vela can. And that's what we just talked about. I think Anthony Wise, great job. Just get it down on the net. UNH has been unbelievable tonight to get pucks down on the net. They've avoided pucks getting blocked. I think it's because they haven't hesitated. They just get pucks down there from the defenseman, let their forwards do some damage down at the paint. Unofficially 20 saves in this one for Swayman. Had 22 saves in the 4-4 tie back on the 21st of January between these two teams. Had 53 against UMass last Saturday in a main win. Right now it's 2-0 in favor of UNH. And the Wildcats are going to carry that 2-0 lead to the third period in front of their home fans on White Out the Wit Weekend. So far so good from the New Hampshire perspective. 
Max Gildon and company. 5-0-1 in their last six home games, 7-1-3 and in their last 11. Only one goal scored in this middle period. It came from Charlie Kelleher. Kelleher had a secondary assist on Aaron Nazarian's goal in the first period, but then it was Nazarian feeding Kelleher with Pearson getting the secondary assist to make it 2-0 here in the second. So before we go to the intermission, let's take it downstairs where Natalie Nori is joined by Charlie Kelleher. Natalie. Charlie, with your goal in the second period, your team, your line has been on fire tonight, as they have been all season. How do you describe the way that you three play together? I mean, it's easy playing with both of them. Uh, they're both highly skilled talents, and they both work hard. So uh, it's an honor to play with them every night, and uh, we're just going to keep on trying to roll. Two weeks ago, you came from behind to tie you, Maine. You're in the lead right now. How do you hold on to that to finish this game off? I guess just not be satisfied. It's a game of, uh, it's a roller coaster of a game. So uh, go into the locker room, regroup, and uh, hopefully come out and uh, play like we did the first two. Thank you, Charlie. Back to you. All right, thanks, Natalie, and thanks to Charlie. Two goals for the Wildcats, none for Maine, as Mike Robinson has pitched five consecutive shutout periods here at home in the last two weekends. You're watching College Hockey on Nestle. Sometimes you're ready. Joe, ready? Ready. Sometimes you're not. Ready? Sometimes you can't wait for that moment. And sometimes it sneaks up on you. Ready. But whenever you're ready, or ready as you'll ever be, we're ready as we always are. From the big moments to the small ones and everything in between, we'll handle the financials. Service Credit Union, ready to serve. Xfinity X5, a more powerful way to stay connected. It gives you super fast speeds for all your devices, enhanced coverage, and lets you control your network with the X5 app. It's the ultimate Wi-Fi experience. Xfinity X5, simple, easy, awesome. Xfinity x gives you the speed, coverage, and control you need. Manage your Wi-Fi network from anywhere when you download the x app today. semester break from classes, the UNH men's and women's hockey teams had an opportunity to get out in the community and meet their fans on a different sheet of ice. Let's take a look at the highlights of the annual Skate with the Cats. I think, you know, as, as I say often, you know, our, our programs are part of the fabric of the Seacoast. So for us to get out here, have the opportunity to see so many kids out here smiling and having fun, and then our guys having a great time too, and the women having a great time, I think it's awesome. You know, one of the, one of the staples, I think, of UNH Athletics is the opportunity that our kids, our athletes have to, to get out into the community, with, especially with a lot of the young kids in the Seacoast area. It's not only awesome for the, for the young kids that uh, get to meet our athletes, whether it's the hockey players, the football players, whatever it is, it's also rewarding for our athletes to, to experience that and to, to see the people that come out and cheer them on. So I think it's incredibly rewarding and it's incredibly uh, vital to what we do as an athletics program, not just as a hockey program. 
It's just fun to see, uh, for the community to see our kids uh, in the community because they care so much about people and sometimes they just see them behind a mask and it's good to see their faces and to see their personalities and to see the character they have. It's been a few years they've had it now and it's just, it's nice to be outside New England playing hockey or skating. It's, uh, it's what it's supposed to be like, you know, it all started on ponds and outdoors and here we are. Uh, we're here at Puddle Duck Pond, uh, just coming out here, supporting the community, uh, skating with little kids. It's a great day outside. We do it usually every year. It's just uh, kind of giving back to the community. You know, just the, it's like back to the traditional hockey, like outdoors, skating with the kids. Like every kid comes out here and starts like, skating around. It's really fun for us to just be outside. Uh, nice weather out today, and uh, it's just all about giving back to the community. Just, uh, they, they look up to us, and uh, being able to be on the same ice surface as us, it's uh, pretty special to them, and uh, you know, it's pretty fun for us to be outside and just give back. So uh, I think it sends a good message to everyone, um, just to get people out to the games to watch us and hopefully connect with the kids a little bit just to have that personal connection because I know a lot of kids look up to uh, my teammates and I so it's just a great opportunity for us. Tomorrow night's game has already been ruled a sellout. This one might be as well. I mean, certainly there's no room among the fans in the cat pack. Let's take a look at highlights from period number two, Patrick. Yeah, definitely a great environment here tonight for the players. And I thought UNH is going a great job. I've said it a few times, just getting pucks down to the net, making stuff happen down there. You see this one here with Grasso. He's always danger on the net. You know, Maine's had opportunities too, but I think Robinson's been critical here for some big, Big time save. He's been great positionally. He's a big body. But UNH strikes on, on their transition. They always have. They've had two two on ones here tonight with Nazarian involved with both of them, whether it's Kelleher on the shot or Nazarian taking his one timer. But both have converted on their two on ones. And opportunities that have happened in this game have come from turnovers, but it's also been some grinding work down low second and third opportunities and I think that's where uh, UNH has been successful. I think that's where UMaine can maybe pick it up. I think their intensity at the net front could maybe be enhanced by them wanting to get second and third opportunity chances. I think UNH has done a good job of that tonight. So the Wildcats with a 2-0 lead over the Black Bears. We still have plenty more statistics coming your way during our second intermission from the Whittemore Center. This is College Hockey on Nesson. Is he? Sometimes you're ready. Joe, ready? Ready. Sometimes you're not. Ready? Sometimes you can't wait for that moment. And sometimes it sneaks up on you. Ready. But whenever you're ready, or ready as you'll ever be, we're ready as we always are. From the big moments to the small ones and everything in between, we'll handle the financials. Service Credit Union, ready to serve. 
Grocery shopping, taking the kids to soccer, and getting Buddy to the vet on time. You have so many things to think about, and for a long time, you've been thinking about switching to natural gas. You know it is the most convenient and reliable fuel source. It's versatile, providing fuel for heating, cooking, and clothes drying. And no need to worry about monitoring fuel tanks. So why not make this the year? The year you stop thinking about the benefits of natural gas and start living with them. Call Unitil today at 888-4-UNITIL. Online at unitil.com slash switch. Xfinity X5, a more powerful way to stay connected. It gives you super fast speeds for all your devices, enhanced coverage, and lets you control your network with the X5 app. It's the ultimate Wi-Fi experience. Xfinity X5, simple, easy, awesome. Xfinity x gives you the speed, coverage, and control you need. Manage your Wi-Fi network from anywhere when you download the x app today. As they get the ice ready for period number three, let's take a look at a live stat update brought to you by UNH Analytics and Data Science. Kind of similar to what we've already looked at, just enhanced by the, the 20 minutes that we played, but I think UNH has carried the play. There's been a couple five on threes. Powell plays have not been significant in this game. It's been five on five play. Um, shots are now up 23 to 19 for UNH, but this is now a 20 minute game here. It can go either way. It's two nothing. It's not a big, big lead at all. Uh, the next goal is critical. It's a two game, two goal lead here. If UNH can sustain this lead, they're going to have to continue playing the way they have. If, you, if Maine wants to take the next goal and try to chip away at this, they're going to have to get grittier at the net. They're not playing gritty, hard-nosed hockey. They're playing perimeter hockey. They're looking for that pretty play. They're looking for that stretch pass. It's not going to happen. They need to get grittier down at the net. That live stud update is brought to you by UNH Analytics and Data Science. In just 11 months, you can earn a Master's of Science degree in Analytics and Data Science at UNH. Their highly innovative program uses real-world data from actual companies. Choose from specializations in business, healthcare, public policy, sports, analytics, and more. Apply now and prepare yourself for one of the world's most in-demand careers. Find out more at unh.edu slash analytics. Mike Murphy, Patrick Foley, along with Brendan Glasheen and Natalie Nori. So, Patrick, I turn it over to you. If you're Red Gendron right now, talking to your guys in the locker room, what does Maine need to do to turn things around in the third period? I don't think it's an X's and O's thing. I think it's. I think there's some effort-based issues there. I think there's some. They're looking for offense instead of creating offense, and that's a big difference. You look for offense. You tend to keep your feet slow. You keep the to look for it separate yourself, distance yourself from your teammates. You want to create offense, you're going to the puck, you're above the puck, you're heavy on the puck, you're getting down near the net, you're creating second and third opportunities. I don't think there's much X's and O's that make that happen. I think that's a little motivation in the locker room. Get the older guys to get everybody on board to come back out here and get gritty, physical, and that's where you chip away at a 2 nothing deficit. We'll come back and hear from the Director of Athletics at the University of New Hampshire, Marty Scarano. We'll do that after we take this time out. Infinity X5, a more powerful way to stay connected. It gives you super fast speeds for all your devices, enhanced coverage, and lets you control your network with the X5 app. It's the ultimate Wi Fi experience. Xfinity X5, simple, easy, awesome. Xfinity x gives you the speed, coverage, and control you need. Manage your Wi Fi network from anywhere when you download the X5 app today. 
Ken Ralph, the main AD, joined us in the second period. Well, this is still UNH. This is the house that Scarano built. So Marty Scarano is joined by Natalie Norrie downstairs. There's an unbelievable feel in the building tonight. How cool is this turnout to you in the program? It's just awesome. You know, we've been building towards this. We've had some really great crowds this year, but it's fabulous to have the student body back. They bring the juice to this place. It's electric tonight. How cool is it for UNH Athletics to have this horse historical rivalry with Maine? It's great. I mean, it's as good as it gets in college sports, regardless of the sport. This series is as good as there is a call of college hockey, particularly when you're playing in an atmosphere like this. And what is your favorite part of White Out the Wind? My favorite part of what's happening? White Out the Wind, yes. The student body. I've seen, I've been privileged to see a lot of great student bodies over my years here, and they, they got it going tonight. Thank you, Marty. Enjoy the rest of your night. Back to you. All right, Natalie and Marty right there in the thick of the action, even as the players came on the ice, they never lost their cool, and I'm sure that's part of the key for Mike Sousa's team. Can't lose your cool here in this third period. So far through 40 minutes, they have stayed to the game plan, and it's working out pretty well. Yeah, and I think they've, they, their biggest test now is in the next 20 minutes. Uh, what they did for the last 40 is is over. You park it, you leave it. It's, it's about what you do now here for 20 minutes. And that's the difference in a 2 nothing game. You can go one way or another with this. And I know that's what Coach Yuzu is probably preaching to his guys in the room, is that we, we can't sit on what we just did. we got to enhance what we did in the next the last 20 minutes. Third period underway as it's Max Gildon in his own end. Can't get it beyond Fossier. Fossier to Pearson, quick snapper, and a stick save from Robinson. That's that top line of Fossier, Pearson, and Trailmax that's going to have to contribute, you would think, for Maine to come back. Pearson behind the net. He's thrown down by Anthony Wise. A delayed penalty upcoming against UNH. So Maine will try to get an extra attacker, Doherty, onto the ice. Here's one thrown in right on the doorstep. Pearson could not get one through the near post of Robinson. Six on five right now for Maine. UNH. Need to get the whistle, and they will as Grasso touches the puck. But 40 seconds into the third, Maine gets a break it needs. Yeah, I think, you know, Anthony Wise gets a stick up high, probably borderline cross check, but big test there now. I think this is the opportunity that Maine needed heading into this start of the period. Special teams have not been there for either side. Maine 0 for 1 on the power play. UNH 0 for 3. But off the draw, it comes back to Sorota. Near side, it's Keeper. Surveys. Sorota in the high slot. Ventures left. Keeper. Banks it off the end wall. Schmidt Vestra out to the point. Sorota. Blackburn got a stick in there, but it's back out to Keeper at the blue line. Schmitz, Vestrup, Keeper. Sirota from the faceoff dot. Save Robinson, rebound outside. Keeper. That one is blocked in front by Mass. Another block by Benton Mass. Sirota has it back on his stick. Across to Schmidt, Vestrup. Doherty. Between two Wildcats, find Sirota. Mass got a stick in there, and it deflects out of play. What about the penalty killing of Benton Mass? Yeah, great job. A couple block shots. He looked like um, he was in, in the pipes with Robinson on that. Um, but I think UNH has done a great job of getting in shot lanes, making themselves big so they can have an opportunity to block shots using their sticks. You know, you can get caught running around on the penalty kill on the big sheet and really kill yourself on the penalty kill. You gotta be smart, detailed. You gotta know when to pressure, know when to front pucks, know when to jump on loose pucks. Wildcats able to clear. Maine is 14 for 90 on the power play so far this season. That's about 15%. Pierce centering feed intercepted by Grasso, who just threw it right to the main line. Vela nearly had it on his tape for a drive in. Still loose in the center zone, and this is costing Maine some power play time. Binner. Michael to Fossier. Fossier tries to go across. Vela gets a good stick in there. Chase Pearson chips it up the boards. 
Fossier finds Pearson. Binner now on the near wing. Pearson below the dots. Fossier directly behind the net. Binner mid slot. Pearson left side was aiming for the upper near corner. Shot it wide. And the Black Bears regroup at center ice. Quickly back across is Pearson. Pearson plays in front. Fossier the redirect. And Robinson makes the save just as the wise penalty expires. And we're back to a five on five situation. Yeah, pretty good job here. If, uh, keeping everything to the outside. You don't give Maine much. Pearson's got to throw a, an off angle shot on the net from outside the dots. I think UNH would take that all night. Um, now back to five on five play. They have to stay five on five. You can't give Maine the opportunity to get back in games with, with penalties. Daniel Perez carries all the way behind the goal line to the far side. Finds Becker. A shot to the glove of Robinson, a sliding Kelleher. Didn't get a block shot, but probably deterred Becker from really getting a lot of. Yeah, and you know what, Becker? That. Hey, it, it, I'm sure Robinson would agree. I'll take that shot all night long. I can see it. There's no one in front of me. He's at the blue line. I think UNH's done a good job all night of keeping Maine's offense isolated to the outside of the rink. Pearson to Kelleher. Those guys each have two points tonight. Kelleher a goal and an assist. Pearson two assists. Nazarian a goal and an assist. That represents the 2-0 score. Nazarian at center lets it go through to Wise. Boyd between the rings. Nazarian at the end of a shift plays it behind the net. Let's Swayman slow it down. There's Pearson. Get out of the way from Yulebauer. Becker assists on the Black Bears side, but on the four check, Miller kicks to his stick, trying to stuff it in far post. A lot of work going on over there as Crookshank was in the vicinity as well. And then Hawk able to clear things out, and Swayman gets the whistle. You know, I'm most impressed by this line in their ability, Kelleher, to stay on pucks. They win a lot of one on one battles down below the goal line. As fast and transitional as they can be, they're still effective down low, and this is a line that can play in the line rush transition, or they can play down low and, and grind teams down. And they're not afraid to stick their nose in where some teams uh, are probably looking for them just to transition and be high offensive zone, line rush type team. Right now we've got a line of Miller, Sheffaloo, and Crookshank on the ice for the Wildcats. As the puck is at center, gets by a barrier, a chance for Peeper. It's in deep, so Peeper will have to bring it back up the dasher to Butala. Butala wheels, deals, got a little bit on it, but it was deflected, and Miller gets ahead to Sheffaloo. Three on two developing. Miller, Sheffaloo, forehand bid in front as Crookshank was there, and Swayman just out-muscled the Wildcat on rushing skaters. Yeah, I mean, look. you got to love this. The best part about this pass is when, when Keeper keeps that, dishes it, but then he goes hard to the net. And he's able to whack down at that net. He whacked two or three more times at that net. That's how you do it. That's These types of games are won with those types of plays. Very rarely you're going to see these spectacular plays. That's the type of hockey that wins your hockey games in tight battles where every shift, every point matters. But Jeremy Swayman's been busy. He's posted 30-plus saves in 12 games this season, including six of the last eight. Here comes Vela. Swayman, another stop on the short side. The carom goes into the netting. Yeah, you see Vela, he's just using some inside out. Stays strong on his stick and is able to get on that puck. To show you how determined he is, and I think he's a strong kid. I think he was determined when he took his penalty earlier in the game, but that was just sheer frustration. He's a competitive guy. Unofficially 24th save for Swayman. Crookshank from the point, making McKinnon from the point. Stop made, rebound to the near boards. Maine will get to it. Binner chips for Fossier. Black Bears in transition. Mass avoids the four-checking Fossier. Then gets crunched by Robbins. That make it Pearson with the check. Trail Max to Michael. He whirls, fires well wide. Hit the glass. Binner from the half wall. Keeps it in deep. Fossier out in front. Just missed Pearson's stick. Grasso and Vela on the back check for UNH. Reclaimed by the Bears. Binner to Michael. Michael with some space. Rister blocked down. 
to the far wall. Michael again heads towards the mid slot. Threw one that bounced off of Chase Pearson and gets deflected to center ice. That's where Marcus Vela is on it. Vela comes in. He fires wide. Trailmax got back on the play just in the nick of time. The Varrier from the far side, D, stretches it to Nazarian. Binner will wind it around to Robbins. Back on Binner's stick. Poked away by Nazarian. Kelleher. Back to Nazarian. Backhand shot. Saves Swayman. Loose puck. Boyd off the redirect in front. Pearson. Robbins will dig it out. Cross ice Doherty. The return pass Robbins. He walks in. He shoots. But Robinson denies. That was Nashua against Bedford. A couple of New Hampshire kids squaring off toe to toe. And a whistle at the end of all that, but what a play for Mike Robinson. Yeah, I think Robinson's on his game tonight. Really stayed positionally sound, wasn't swaying one way or another. Made sure he made himself big. No question Mike Robinson's been a difference in this game. A shutout of UConn, 6-0 last Saturday night in this building. And as you can see, no goals on the board for Maine. So far, through two periods and six plus minutes of the third. Not getting quite the offensive support he did against the Huskies on Saturday. But there's still time. Crookshank will carry it in. Crookshank is roughly thrown down by Butala. Six on six crime there is the freshman Simon Butala from Downingtown, PA. 6 2, 195, uh, 195 took care of Crookshank as the pass to Miller just hopped over his stick. Center ice killed on. He swivels out of the way and reverses direction again to force Hawk to chase. Crookshank into the zone. Blackburn, he fires one behind the net. Shea on the near side will chip it out. McKinnon snaps it to Blackburn. Keeper got a stick in to break up the pass intended for Esposito. Michael. Looking for the breakout. Westerlin. Bidding for Shea. Shea races in. Finds Westerlin right circle. Four-hander. Why? Esposito checked into the near glass by Shea. But the pass comes out to McAdams. He's got Sheflu. He shoots. Swayman a save. Played in front of the net. Esposito world could not get the shot. And what appeared to be an empty net. But Swayman makes another big-time stop. You're talking about how many lines that Mike Seuss is able to roll out. He's getting contributions across all four lines here. Yeah, he's getting production. I think he's got a, a, a great mentality on the bench here. Let's keep rolling every line. Every line's getting pucks to the net. Second, third opportunities. Beating, um, beating guys up the ice for those second and third opportunities. Just so happened that puck didn't go in. But Great pass to Fossier from Michael. Fossier. Can't get it to Pearson initially. Pearson recovers. Fossier, he saw Muehlbauer on the far side. Didn't have anything on the pass. And McAdams lunging for it. Able to clear. Headman feed. Finds Pearson entering the zone left wing. He'll drive one on net. And Mike Robinson, as he's done all night long, makes the save. So it's still 2-0 Wildcats. They came oh so close to making it three. But Jeremy Swayman keeps the Black Bears alive. And there he is. They call him the handsome goalie here at home, Mike Robinson. Those numbers are pretty, I'll tell you that. It's been a long time. You see the Friday night game last week at UConn, a tie game. But it's been a while since someone's found a way by that man. That's two-plus games he's had scoreless. But as we all know, we, we don't talk about it until it's over. But he's on track tonight. I mean, he's he's been a wall in there for a number of opportunities Maine's had whether straight breakaways they've had on him or two-on-one opportunities, second, third chances. He's been in great position. He's a great athlete for a big kid. Save on Muehlbauer. I'm sorry, we, we weren't supposed to talk about it. <laughs> oh. All right, let's not Knock jinx on anything. Wood. <laughs> All right, Vela chips in, gives chase in the far corner. Again, it, as long as it stays 2-0, Maine has no reason to think. They're in a deep, deep hole yet. Still plenty of time. Big hit by Wise as 
Doherty was trying to move in on that far side and Wise had better ideas. Keeper maintains possession in the attack zone but Van Riemsdyk just does enough to force him across the blue. Right, Black Bears in their own end. Trail Max hand off to Fossier. He enters. Trail Max short side bid and that one goes flying around the glass and skitters to the far end of the bear zone. Keeper banking one too far for Pearson. This will be an icing call with 10.32. Well, jinx one streak maybe. How about another one? Liam Blackburn, 15 straight games with at least one point. And as Natalie, Tor Natalie Norrie tells us, Mike Seuss has been pleased with Liam, not only because of the points. A lot of praise to Liam Blackburn this past week. He said he embodies what a lot of schools look for, player and student wise. He's a smart kid. He studies genetics here at UNH, and that intelligence carries over onto the ice. Coach said not only is he able to make a play before getting the puck, but he knows exactly where the puck is going to be, and that's what makes him a great player. Back to you. Were you a genetics major, Patrick, when you were here at UNH? No, I don't think so. <laughs> that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. Yeah, Liam is he's, he is a very introspective kid. One of the questions I asked him at the press conference, or I asked Coach Souza at the press conference, is he a vocal, loud guy? He said, no, no, he's not loud, but the way he carries himself, the, his demeanor. You said this earlier, that keeping that even keel, sometimes you need that more yeah, than a fiery absolutely. guy. The ebbs and flows of hockey and this emotion in the game, you need someone who's stable, who's a staple, who's kind of right in the middle, and, and he leads by example. He doesn't hoot and haul. He just does his job. Trail Max looking for the pass from Michael. Just out of his reach as McKinnon was there to meet him behind the goal line. Mass. Diagonal feed Jackson Pearson. Gains the line. Looking for Nazarian. Let's swipe back to the point where Verrier joins the play. Redirect by Kelleher. Almost ended up in the slot, but Keeper was there. Fossier across. One on four as he's at the end of his shift. Goes diagonal dump in. So room for Pearson to roam. Finds Crookshank. Roughly handled by Mulebauer. It's Shea. Good poke check by Boyd. Peeper in front of his own bench. Throws a bouncing puck to the Wildcat end. Barrier will skate through center. There's Blackburn chopping one towards Swayman. And he'll short hop that one with 9.31 remaining. So we'll take it. We will take a timeout here at the Whittemore Center. There's your score. The Wildcats in Chapter 1 of this Whiteout the Wit Weekend leading the Black Bears 2-0. It is a 2-0 Wildcat lead. Mike Robinson we told you about. But what about Jeremy Swayman? Let's get more on Maine's netminder with Brendan Glasheen. Hey, Mike. Jeremy Swayman now up to 30 saves for the 13th time this season. That includes seven of Maine's last nine games. Riding momentum after a huge day against UMass, the number two team in the country on Monday. A career high, 53 saves. The coaches said he has not been the problem. That second goal that went through in the last period was on a cross diagonal that was not his fault. The defense has to be better, and offensively, more puck management needed out of the Black Bears. Big shot here. Thank you, Brendan, as Robbins was able to find Shea in the slot. Just missed wide. And the Black Bears keep it in, applying some pressure. It's Binner. Michael, one timer from the right circle from Pearson, and there's Robinson again. Hey, you know what? The puck's hitting him, but as a goaltender, when the puck hits you, that means one thing: you're in good position, and that's a that's a skill that, that a good goalie always has. It's easy to say, oh, he's just the, you know the main offense is putting pucks in his chest and not putting it. He's he's in good position, and that's a big big deal for a goaltender. That's why the puck's hitting him. Mike Robinson, drafted by the San Jose Sharks. Sophomore from Bedford, New Hampshire. Bouncing puck comes back to Keeper from the high slot through a bunch of bodies, found its way through. Robinson has stopped. Westerlin trying to drive one home in the near post to no avail. Westerlin back to it. Far side, Mass staples him against the glass. Esposito working hard to get it out of the zone. Black Bears control, Quinlevin. Gears towards the half wall against McKinnon in deep Perez. And that was sent wide off the stick of Jacob Sorota, the extra skater out there for tonight for Red Gendron. 
Westerlin behind the net. Sirota, right wing, keeper, a one-time blast, glove down by Robinson, rebound, score! Westerlin puts it home on the rebound, and Maine has cut the lead to one with 8-14 remaining in the third. Well, not much Robinson can do with this one. You know, he he has an opportunity to make the save. I think he missed it on the glove, but UNH defender's got to pick up the net front on this. There's too much going on here. A lot of puck watching. When you see that initial shot go down the net, your first instinct that the defender at the net has to be, I got to find guys, get sticks, so these second opportunities are, are not available. And, you know, Robinson's been there every every step of the way tonight, and that's where UNH could have bailed him out on that one. So Evo Westerlin, the sophomore from Linköping, Sweden, now has goals in four of his last five games, three straight games. The only exception in that stretch was the first meeting between these two teams at two points against UMass in that upset win that Brendan was talking about. Well, changes things quite a bit here. Also pretty impressive that Maine has a, a good contingent of fans. Wouldn't be real surprised in this border war. Well, now you're with a two to one hockey game. This is probably the uh, result of. There comes Pearson trying to tie it, but couldn't get it onto his forehead. And there's a penalty coming up as Wise just took down Pearson. And doesn't this change the complexion of the game? Maine will go on a power play with 7.30 remaining, trailing it 2-1. to one. Yeah, had a little wrestling match in the corner. I know why he's a big kid and likes to mix it up. But, uh, once you get that hand off your stick, you start to wrap people up. I think he took it down on the ice as he was falling. And, Chase Pearson, junior captain for the Maine Black Bears. Just even sometimes just being yanked down is enough to get your team a bit of a lift. And that's what Pearson, as you called for, Patrick, the, the leaders trying to get Maine back into the game. It gives them this man advantage. Well, you can see the ebbs and flows of the game of hockey here. It's, the tides can turn in, in the matter of one shift. Sirota from the center point. Near side, Doherty. Fan, Mass, dropped a stick, quickly picks it back up. Rob Michael across the Doherty, couldn't handle it. And then this area are making Mass just wound up and drove one along the near dasher. Sorota will work it up ice. Blackburn hindered his progress. Blackburn still making things difficult. Got a stick in there. Sorota pressed back. So Rob Michael will take over. Ahead to Doherty. Got to the Wildcat line. Played it behind. Quickly there was Boyd alertly. Found the far side seam. Sends it down the big sheet. As Red Gendron called it the ocean here at the Woodamore Center of the Big Ice. It's a great job by, by Liam Blackburn of getting in on the penalty kill and forcing Maine to make a decision in their own end on the breakout. Keeper, backhand feet across the ice, Pearson. Pearson gains the line. Down low, plays it in front. One-timer, Trailmax save. Follow-up shot, Fossier save. And the net comes off. It's Pegs with 6-11 left. And 41 seconds in the power play. Let's get another look. Yeah, Maine does a great job getting pucks low to high. And then they've had opportunities in the guts of the ice a few times. That's why UNH has to pick these guys up that are in the middle of the ice, right in front of Robinson. And that's just taking care of your net front and it's not puck watching. I think that's what UNH has to kind of pick up on here as Maine starts to send guys down the middle of the ice. McKinnon teed one up, sent it down. And Swayman will play it behind his own net. Final 30 seconds of the penalty against Wise, who was called for cross check. Fossier goes across the ice trail max. The extra pass sets up a slapper blocked down by Carrasso. Keeper got it back to the near side. Binner. Trail Max. Trail Max into the circle. Pearson up. Keeper to Binner. Keeper faked the slapper. Instead, Fossier. Penalty is over. So Nazarian joins the play. It's five on five again. 
Maine, however, continues to possess in the Wildcat zone. Pearson, trail Max, reverses direction on McKinnon. Behind the net, Fossier, pass to Keeper. Had to retreat just a bit, but keeps it alive on the cycle. Trail Max looking for the blind pass in front. McKinnon deflects, and then Gildon will throw it out. Under five to play in this one goal game. As the Black Bears ice the puck. And we talk about leadership. This is where the UNH bench now has to pick it up. You have to have certain guys like Marcus Veller on the bench. Their captain who's gonna say, hey, listen guys, we're not we're not trying to win this game two to one. We want to try to win this game three to one. Let's not sit back and wait for this clock to run down. Let's keep the pedal down. Let's try to continue to be aggressive in our game and not just try to sit back in hopes that we just maintain this lead. A crowd of 6,152 on hand tonight. 6152. Tomorrow night it'll be 6501. Already a sellout crowd announced for the rematch on White Out the Wet Weekend. We'll also have that game on Nesson. Kane sends the puck out. Here come the Black Bears looking for the equalizer as it was triggered high and wide by Brendan Robbins. The other way. Pearson giving chase, but Jack Quinlevin curls all the way around before the Black Bears control. Perez chips it by Barrier. Leaves it on the half boards. Quinlevin tried to center. Goes all the way through. There's a blast by Becker that's blocked in the far circle and carried out by Nazarian. Zarian was at the end of a shift, so he'll simply send it down. Four minutes remaining in regulation. UNH, I get the feeling they're kind of clinging to this one goal lead right now. Yeah, that's what you want to avoid. You want to continue to put pressure on Maine. Run the clock down in their end. All right, Blackburn and Miller trying to do just that, applying some pressure on the near side. Four check. Becker to Schmidt Vestra. Doherty. Looking across for Westerlin. He had the goal earlier in the period. Nice job by Wise. With two Black Bears in pursuit. Gets Miller. Miller centers for Crookshank. Could not settle it down. Michael chips it out. Wise tried to blast it forward, but it hit a body and directs to the near side. That's where Schmidt Svestrup puts it in behind the net. Gets around Gildon. Michael a blast. Bouncing puck loose. Still not claimed. Doherty was over there. Westerlin whirls and fires. Missed the target. Michael to Binner straight away. Poked out by Miller. Miller hustling after it, but Michael has the better angle. Michael stretches it out. Pass Schmidt Estrup. I say his name different every time. <laughs> out to center ice. Puck on edge. Keeper. And Ream Cycle throw it in, forcing Swayman to come out of his crease. Lofted out. Fossier plays a deep trail max in the far corner. Blew a tire. Fossier gets back to it. Main sets up in the offensive zone with Keeper. Skates laterally. Now across the way. Fossier, extra pass out high, a deflection and a score. Becker threw it in. It's deflected in, and Main has equalized 2 2 with 2 11 remaining. It's a great job by Maine, uh, sticking with it, maintaining their positioning in the offensive zone in front of that netminder to get some eyes taken away. And I don't think they've done this all night. They've done a great job in the last five minutes of putting guys in front of the net, getting pucks down there, getting a little greasy. But, um, you know, this is what we talked about is that UNH, you, you almost sensed it coming just sensed that they were kind of like holding on in the hopes they were going to take this game two to one opposed to hey let's go get the third one. So Chase Pearson leading goal scorer for the Black Bears I believe will be credited for his 13th deflecting that one that was sent in from Sam Becker and in the initial pass came from Mitch Fossier under two minutes to play in the third and it's a 2-2 game. Well ties are something nothing new to the Wildcats, although Maine's not thinking tie right now. What? They have really taken to the Wildcats. Here the puck in the blue paint again as Robbins came close on the near post. Wildcats on their heels just a bit. 
Pearson to Wise. Back to Gildon. Still 90 seconds remaining in the third. Here's Blackburn across the line. Nazarian Rister wide. And the carom back to center ice. Doherty trying to go around the check of Mass. Boyd trying to move up the wall. It's lifted high in the air. That one hits the scoreboard. That's a first for us here, this beautiful video board. Well, let's kind of recap what's gotten us to this point here. 2-2 two -two with 114 remaining. Yeah, I mean, certainly there's been odd man rushes. There's been two-on-ones. There's been gritty action down at the net. Um, you know, you're seeing Maine put the pressure on here near, near the end. And, and this is what made UNH successful the whole time is the way Maine's playing right now. And it's almost been flipped. The, the, rever the roles have reversed. They sure have. As Binner threw one in off the carom, Pearson was looking for a rebound as he was battling with oh, Mike Robinson taking some exception to Pearson's work near his net. Well, you know what? That's This is where the UNH defensemen have to help Mike Robinson out. He's feeling a little heat down there. He's getting more bodies in front of him. He's not been able to see pucks as well. This is like your quarterback, and you're the offensive line, and you've got to give him time to make the play or see the puck and give him room to do his job down there. And that's on the defenseman for UNH. Robinson taking exception to Pearson putting the puck in the net after the whistle. That's a no-no, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's not a... Pearson's stick ends up broken as a result of the love tap for Robinson. So Pearson has a new stick as he skates back for an all-important face-off with 103 left in regulation. Pearson versus Vela. Good stuff here. UNH Maine, yet another chapter in this rivalry unfolding before us. They skated to a 4-4 tie in Maine 11 days ago. Gildon has it, trying to play it out, but there's Keeper to keep it in, throws it just wide. Gildon got the stick out there. Touched by Van Riemsdyk, but he was on the near side of the red line, so that will be an icing call with 50.6 remaining. Going back to that game at Maine, we touched on it in the first period. For those joining us, Maine was the home team. They rode the momentum of a 2-0 lead only to not be able to hold it. And voila, here the Black Bears are on the other side. They erase the two-goal deficit, trying to finalize a come-from-behind win here late. Yeah, and that's the, that's the, that's the, the riddle that uh, UNH is trying to figure out here, is how did they learn from the game up in Orono to make sure that doesn't happen against them here down at, at UNH. Grasso blocked the initial Robbins bid, then Robbins tried again, but then sailed it high. As we get a look at Max Gildon. He's looking up at the clocks, noticing 44.3 seconds. All important defensive zone faceoff need to win and get it the other way to go for the game winning goal. Michael can't keep in the zone. So he'll just diagonal fire it in. Anthony Wise. Looking for Kelleher near side, but Robbins pinches in. Wise. Gildon with 25 seconds. It's stolen by Robbins, retaken by Kelleher, but offside had been whistled first. 22 and a half seconds left. And this is where you guys, you have to get your, your top guys as much rest as possible. Managing shifts and the length of shifts as a coach right now is very important. Because you obviously want your top players on the ice if you're either team and making sure that they're not only on the ice, but they're not fatigued. Trell Max will softly feather it to the near corner of the UNH zone. Wise playing it for Benton Mass with 12 seconds remaining in regulation. It's at the center ice logo near the main line, but Keeper will get there, keep it at center. Grasso grasping at it. A shot from the red line. Robinson makes the save on the Michael bid, and we are going to overtime at the Whittemore Center. Maine strikes twice in the third period. Emil Westerland and Chase Pearson. So let's go back, Patrick, and take a look at the four goals that brought us to five extra minutes tonight. Yeah, in, in all different points in the game, we've seen this two on one. We've had two, the, the two goals by UNH are almost identical, just at the other end of the beach ice. And uh, Nazarian involved in both of them, Kelleher, just both both goals, great two on ones, great releases. And then we talk about 
how was Maine going to get back in this game? They were going to get back in it by creating traffic around Robinson, getting second opportunities at the net. And within the span of, I'd say, six to eight minutes, they came and put the, as much pressure on UNH as UNH is putting on, on Maine all game. And, and now we're at a 2-2 standstill going into overtime. And I think that's a result of, you know, Maine figuring things out. And I think UNH, at the end there, was almost hoping to to get away with a two-to-one win. And, and we saw them laying back a little bit. But, you know, the stats, yeah, sometimes the stats are, are good. Sometimes they just, they're just stats. You know, 39 to 32, I think this has been an even game. At times, been lopsided one side or the other. But, you know, saves, UNH has made 37 saves. I think, you know, both goaltenders have been phenomenal tonight at certain points in the game. But and here's what's at stake. Two points in Hockey East, and currently UNH in seventh place, just two points ahead of me. Yeah, I mean, you look at the, the standings. Two points, one point can make the difference. Uh, you know, that's why it's so important that not only that you, you, you go into this overtime with the man mentality that we, we want to get the two points, but if you do end up with a tie, that's a big point. And I know UNH is probably going to feel defeated if that ever happened, but... Man, they've got to go for it in this overtime. And there's no bad shots in overtime. You have to play aggressive hockey. There's no sitting back and hope that we'll get out of here with one point. You want two points. And you have to have good line changes. Because you have to get your best players on the ice as much as possible within five minutes. Which means you've got to maintain the integrity of the shift. Make sure that you have short shifts. You change at the appropriate time. Not when you're tired, but when you can get off. And you've got you've to make sure you always have somebody high so that you don't get beat on an odd man rush. Overtime is underway at the Whittemore Center. UNH in Maine, goal scorers Nazarian and Kelleher for the Wildcats, Westerland and Pearson for the Black Bears. Wise at his own blue line. Over to Gildon. A lot of stick handling. Loses the puck right around his own blue line, so joining the play, Nazarian. Winding up and Michael was trying to send it in instead he sent it way out into the student section Well, here's the deal with UNH close games have been their friend 16 times out of 26 games a game will be decided by one goal or fewer They've tied eight times already, which is a school record and too shy of the NCAA record Further six of New Hampshire's eight ties have come on Friday nights 11 total overtime games. This becomes the 12th tying the school record set in 2009-2010. As you can see, the fans are certainly still into this one, and they still believe in UNH. Well, UNH could use a, um, a shift that kind of sets the tone here for the overtime if they want to get back. Here comes Crookshank, a forehander, and Muehlbauer got a stick in there, and the deflection out of play. If they want to get back to the way they were playing prior to the two to two tie here. They've got to set a tone here in the overtime. Good, good pass out of the zone from Mass to spring Crookshank. But Muehlbauer on the back check gets the job done. And now the face off will be to the right of Swayman. There's Liam Blackburn. There's a player to watch. 15 straight games with a point coming into tonight. Been held scoreless so far. Barrier off the face off. Bounces into the near corner. Chris Miller from the left circle, high riser, gloved by Swayman, face-off upcoming. Face-off, big key to the, the matchup. We talked about it before the game. And integral part of the game when you're in overtime is your, your face-offs. It's all five guys, too. It's not just the center iceman. You have to have all five guys involved in it. Possession time and overtime is, is usually an indication of Nazarian off the face off. There it is. Scores! Aaron Nazarian in overtime. Face off. We have to uh, look at look at this from from a couple standpoints. At the dot, and then look at the fight and everybody around that puck. It's it's a jump ball. It's, this is this is what it is. It, it, you need all five guys to get it. Nazarian sniped one. He was hot tonight. 
Pearson wins the faceoff. Nazarian just drags it away from all the bodies, positioned himself perfectly, and strikes Aaron Nazarian with his 11th goal of the season. Two goals and an assist tonight in a 3-2 UNH win. There he is, your service credit union player of the game, Aaron Nazarian, and this place is electric. Well, he's a special player. I think he's great with the puck. I think he can, he can shoot the puck, but he all can, can make the, the play happen, as he did on Kelleher's goal. But you saw his capability of putting the puck in the net on his two-on-one, and then that shot, getting that off the way he did off that face-off. He, he knew exactly where he was putting that puck, and, and guys like him could do that. Today's player of the game brought to you by Service Credit Union. Show your Wildcat pride. Get the official debit card of the UNH Wildcats. Open your Service Credit Union checking account at any branch, including the branch inside Wildcat Stadium, online or by phone 24-7. A smiling Aaron Azarian lifts the Wildcats over the rival Black Bears 3-2. UNH will play against Maine again tomorrow in the second half. Uh, wide out the win. Good night, everybody. With Patrick Foley, Natalie Norrie, Brendan Glasheen, I'm Mike Murphy saying thanks for tuning in to this 3-2 UNH win against Maine. This has been a presentation of UNH Wildcat Productions.